It's the Don't Make It Weird Podcast with your hosts, Dina Ashmore and Daniel Quigley. What's going on, guys? My name is Daniel Quigley, and welcome to the initial Don't Make It Weird Podcast. I am joined today by the effervescent enigma of energy herself, Dina Ashmore. Say hi to the fine folks, Dina. There's, there's no pressure with that at all. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, by the way, on that note, uh, there's going to be a lot of swearing here. So if you have children listening to this, why the fuck do you have children listening to this? But there's going to be swearing. Why do you have children? <laughs> An even better question. I ask myself that every single day. <laughs> uh, so this podcast is going to be a little bit of literary, a little bit of, uh, you know, what's going on with our lives and a lot of Dina telling us ridiculous stories about her life. So, uh, you know, Dina, give everyone a little background about you. You know, how many books you've written, where, what, you know, education you have. I don't know. Oh, Do you like God. walks on the beach? Oh, God, I hate the beach, first of all the worst place it's my literal hell but um oh god I hate talking about myself um I have in the wrong business I know I know I don't understand um I graduated high school at 14 not a genius at all at all people will learn that people will learn I'm not a genius they're gonna know that you're wrong and I'm right um I got two college degrees and finished that at 18 and never published a book but I mean, I want to, and I've written a lot, so that counts for something, right? I get a little bit of credit for that, just a little bit. A little bit, a little, a little bit. bit. Doesn't matter, still counts. <laughs> okay. so we're making a musical, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, listen, there's gonna be a lot of musicals and I have a terrible singing voice. I have a uh, face for radio and a uh, voice for silent films, so. I love it, love yeah. it. Yeah, just wanna on that one for a second. <laughs> Uh, um, so said. my background too I am another amateur author I went to school for sports and I coach sports and I've written like you know, I mean I've written a ton of stuff but I've got three uh, works and projects so what you've got here are two absolute amateurs they're going to tell you how to make it in this business yes. and make your stories awesome so you know absolutely I know it all no pressure at all <laughs> she graduated <laughs> high school 14 folks remember that she's yep. a super genius right here <laughs> All up in here. And, and I'm, exactly. And I'm the polar opposite. I'm just that golden retriever that's just kind of wagging my tail going, please like me. And I'm the freaking wolf. <laughs> the wolf. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So we are going to talk today about uh, disguises because we are definitely uh, living that imposter syndrome disguises ourselves uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, being writers, I feel like we all feel like we're wearing a disguise a little bit, but we're going to kind of talk a little bit about, um, you know, the plot device, the use of it, both, you know, in kind of comics, books, television, and also, if you're good, and if you stay with us listening, we will have Dina tell us one of her stories. Tease us, Dina, what, what, what kind of story we got in line? Oh, today we're going to talk about that time that I stalked my best friend's ex-boyfriend Wearing a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we would start out with don't make it weird. And we drink anytime that we have to use our own uh, uh, podcast headline as a. Uh, <laughs> or just in general. In general, too. I mean, today I'm at work, so I'm drinking Gatorade. So I'm kind of the loser. Um, but that sounds good. So, I mean, like, before we even get into that story, I mean, like, right now, like, I'm picturing you with, like, the fake glasses and, like, the little mustache and stuff. I mean, <laughs> there we go. I just put the glasses on. For the folks listening at home in our completely audio format, she has a, uh, a set of glasses on, and it looks tremendous. Yes, and there was a wig right. involved, too. So, so. And then if that story isn't good enough for you, we like to end our store, our uh, shows with a uh, little segment we call One of Us Idiot Co-Hosts Reads uh, the wor a Voted Worst Line from a Romance Novel. So again, we didn't come up with this list. We used our good friend, Dr. Google. And uh, we're just going to do a dramatic reading of whatever profane, weird, descriptive uh, sex scene comes our way. So once again, if you have children, please, for the love of God, turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> and before we even get started in any of that 
Dina, I, I, I have a question for you. Oh, God. No you pressure. Ready? I'm ready. No pressure at all. You're ready. I'm and ready. Remember, D Dina's a super genius, so if you don't feel smarter immediately after this question, we <laughs> fail. <laughs> I'd put all the worst. <laughs> um, all right. So in the honor of our demo and the fact that absolutely no one will probably hear this episode outside of our uh, Dina's husband and my own wife, but my wife won't. She'll just be like, yeah, I don't know. My husband's about. not going to listen, so it's fine. <laughs> exactly. So no one's going to listen to us besides yeah, for no, us. Yeah, so. it's fine. <laughs> it's totally good. Yeah, um, it's but in honor of Don't Make It Weird, I'd like you to tell me about a time where someone made it weird for you. You know, like if you liked something, if there was something that you were into that, you know, whether through circumstance, whether through someone just being an asshole, made something that you used to like, a television show, a movie, a a beach <laughs> and made that place fucking suck <laughs> um all right so i'm actually gonna let you pick i got two i got one oh. thing that i made weird for me or <laughs> or i got something that somebody else made weird for me so it's your choice do you want me to make it weird or do you want somebody else to make it weird man i i love a choose your own adventure novel so i'm pretty excited about this yeah uh Dina, make it weird for me, man. Give me, give me the time you made it weird yourself. I'm, I'm excited about this. All right. We're going back to an age that I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you got to give us some, like, some, like, music, some, like, take it back music. Like a... Wait, I don't know what a, I don't know what music for going back in time. It's got to be, like, the, the chime, like, the wind chimes. I don't even know. Perfect. No, no, no. That's the perfect sound. That's exactly what going I picture going back in back time. Back in time. That's exactly what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like a low-key wookie is that what you hear <laughs> oh god um i don't remember how old i was but i was old enough that like in my head well okay it might have still not been an appropriate age but we're we're gonna say that it is so that i feel better so i was still at the age where okay, i could I'm not control when i had to go to the bathroom okay so, so like I last year. A little, yeah, like uh, uh, two years, two years. <laughs> Give me a little bit of credit, a little bit of credit. So it's the middle of the night, and I remember distinctly I had a dream about a monkey riding a horse in a jungle. First dream that I ever remember. You're welcome. Horses, it's a theme. <laughs> You're definitely going to be touching on horses in the future. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. All right, so I woke up from my dream. And I realized that I had shit the bed. Yep. Oh, no. Literally. Yeah I, yeah, I literally shit the bed. And I was so panicked, and I didn't know what to do. And I checked. I reached down to check to ensure that what I thought had happened actually happened. And it did. 100% did. And I didn't know what to do because I didn't want to get it on my sheets, but now it's on my hands. So I had the nicest bedroom set in the world for a child. I, I mean, in reality, it was really fucking ugly, but that's fine. In my head, it sets the scene. It was beautiful. It was fancy. Everybody was jealous. Yeah. I was the it girl. Green okay. lace. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And I wiped it on my bright yellow walls straight down. Mm. And now here's the thing. I didn't tell my parents. I cleaned up everything myself, except for that stain on the wall. <laughs> And that's the story. We'll never leave evidence. <laughs> that's the story of how I ruined the color yellow for myself. Because <laughs> every time I walked into my bright yellow room, there was poop on the wall and nobody knew it but me. Because we couldn't figure out what the stain was. And I played dumb and I was like, Mom, I don't know what that is. That's weird. You should, you should clean that off. And it never came off. It was stained permanently. That's super weird. Yeah, no, that that's the definition of make it weird. And the color yeah. yellow is now ruined. Which yeah, is I why, look at uh, yellow and I think of shit. <laughs> yeah, the sun, it's done for me. Yeah, the sun is just one giant turd. Is that what yeah, you're basically telling me? I look up and I'm like, wow, it's shitting all over us right now. <laughs> my nightmare. Oh my gosh. And that also now light. That, that now it makes sense why you don't like the beach. So, I mean, if you don't see Dina, like, right now, even though I can see her, and I promise you it's not the case, I'm just picturing her as, like, the Lord of Darkness, just, like, in pure goth blacks. And, yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. 
so my make it weird story i guess is so i was debating on this and it definitely might get cut because like so when you're talking about how like you got a massage today before we got here i was like man i fucking love massages but more than that yeah but like more than that like here's the thing i used to like like i, I i'm a people pleaser i like to give massages okay but like, oh, like, you know, like, like a fucking a friendly, weirdo yeah, exactly like a yeah. fucking weirdo now granted yeah. i'm married so i haven't had to give a massage in a long time because my wife has like had scoliosis and has like rods in her back so she's like don't fucking touch my back so yeah. you know listen it's been a long damn time but i'm like you know what's gotten weird is fucking massages now like between like like you know when i was like much younger you know that used to be kind of like my go-to kind of move man like hey hey listen baby let me give you a massage. I got I got good massage in hands. It, exactly. Look, yeah, if you don't so see gross. Dina's reaction, yeah. exactly. If you don't see Dina's reaction, she is so disgusted by oh. my comment. And I'm a little disgusted by my comment because That's like it, it is. It is. But it didn't used to be. And now it's like, thank God no, I don't ever have to be. I, I think it always, Maybe it was. always was. You just yeah. you didn't know. I didn't know. And I had enablers <laughs> that were like, yeah, listen, this is a little fucking weird, but dude gives good back massages so you know whatever and and so like that used to be a move but now it's like you know you hear about the celebrity shit you know stuff out in hollywood you hear about deshaun watson and i'm like dude massages are just weird now like yeah as a dude as a dude it's like you know what i, I i'm just gonna let my back die and destroy myself because uh it's it's now weird to be like yes i would like a massage but a purely professional one good sir like <laughs> that's exactly why I go to a gay massage therapist oh my god I hope he's gay I think he's gay like I'm like 99% sure he's gay but either way that's my trick find a gay massage therapist that's smart that's yeah, very very smart totally. and, and so that's the thing that uh, I guess I've also made it weird or maybe I've been weird my whole self so you know to any of my friends and I've given massages to both guys and girls like I'm uh, from a job, but well, I'm now creeped out about the fact that I've ever given massages because it's become a weird thing now. <laughs> it really has, yeah. You made it and, weird. And Dina's video is frozen a little bit, but yeah, yeah. No, it made weird. This might be the last episode of our podcast. Yep. <laughs> this is it. This is how you wind up in jail <laughs> from oh a podcast. God. Who fucking knew? Exactly. There's gonna be a lot of people in the in the mentions that are gonna be like. All right, I, I need to start looking into Daniel's friends that he gave massages to. Um, fuck. <laughs> We're gonna contact some people. Let's get some. Let's get like that group mentality, mob mentality. Let's go. Oh, Jesus. Get him. <laughs> um, get him. And, and and like, listen, I know we're gonna go off the rails here, but like, even and like consensual. Like, thankfully, again, my my wife isn't into it. Like, all right, so when it comes to like intimacy, I don't judge. Like, whatever you're into, you're into. Like, you know, if you wanna role play as a horse <laughs> no. No. <laughs> again that's a story for another day um you know do do you do your freak flag fight the only thing i judge is feet like, oh 100 percent. oh my god feet okay so <laughs> here we go you have children why are they still listening <laughs> we've warned you <laughs> feet my Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, oh, does this give away him to me? Okay. Whatever. He, he owns it. It's fine. So my <laughs> husband, one of my husband's groomsmen at our wedding is a feet guy. And like, oh, every, oh. every damn, oh, it's so gross. And I can't <laughs> handle it. And like, he'll compliment my shoes or something. And I'll be like, oh, no, <laughs> no, get away. No. Like, totally not meaning anything, but either way, because I know that fact about him, I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> just cut that off right there. <laughs> right, no, it's, it's here up, it's not down, thank you. You're, 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 that's like the only guy friend you have, you're like, please just look at my boobs, just Yeah, the feet. please, uh -huh. dear God, that's, yeah, right, right here is where you can look, don't look down, no. <sighs> Outstanding. So but yeah, like, so yeah, like I was gonna say that that was always my, my one thing. Like I didn't do foot, like foot massages. And again, thankfully, my wife's like, not nah, not into any of that because I, I just I don't think I could do it unless my wife wanted me to throw up on her. Cause, yep. <sighs> and now a word from our sponsor. 
we here at the Don't Make It Weird podcast want to give a huge shout out to our very first sponsor, Amel's Garden Shop. You can check them out online at etsy.com slash shop slash E-M-E-L garden shop. They've got live plants, they've got potted plants, they've got vintage pots and planters, wall art prints, clothing, some of the coolest mugs you will ever see. I promise you there will not be any yellow plants, otherwise Dina will have them removed. So again, you can check them out online at etsy.com backslash shop backslash E-M-E-L garden shop. All right, now that we are sufficiently creeped out and weirded out by each other, um, <laughs> I wish you guys could see Dina's face. It's, it's just a look of horror, distraught. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about disguises because now I wish I could hide. Yeah, we're going to have to have a disguise fetish. for this podcast. <laughs> I know exactly. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to reevaluate uh, everything that we did. So, all right, Dina. I'm here. Are you here? You Present, pretty, and punctual. Let's go. Ooh, triple P's. All right. Ooh. So, give me your favorite and or least favorite disguised that has been used in books, TV, sh- movies, anything like that. Like, give me the best and the worst examples of our uh, plot device here. All right. So. I'm just going to, I couldn't remember what book it was, but it was a very, very popular book. And I probably shouldn't even try to remember because I don't want to like get a whole bunch of fans, like that whole fandom coming at me. So that's, that's good this way. There was this book that I was, I freaking hate it. And it's a very common trope that writers do is like their main character, it's female or she's female, it's female, whatever. And yeah, and they take a shower and they like look in the mirror and they're like, I hardly recognize myself. And like, they're about to go into disguise and everything. And like, they're trying to sneak in somewhere and like their face is everywhere. The whole government's looking for them, but they took a shower for the first time in like, what, a week? I don't even know. And they're like, well, I can you do that voice again? You... What voice? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, maybe I hardly even recognize myself oh. anymore. <laughs> They look in the we're, mirror. We're, we're bringing in a whole new demo. <laughs> <laughs> they look in the mirror and they're like, I hardly even recognize myself. <laughs> like, oh, Dina, you saucy every, thing. Stop seducing our fans. <laughs> every time. And I don't understand it. And it works in the book. Well, they think it works. And like it, it, it the, the plot kind of works around that. Yeah. But like every time it's just a shower and like they put like, the lightest shade of eyeshadow and it changes them and I'm like "Mm, no not at all and it pisses me off every time and there was a very popular book that did it and yeah I just and and, and listen for me to go off for me to go off on this like minor side tangent one of those same things that I hate like in books is when it's and so Jane looked in the mirror she noticed luxuriant blonde hair that cascaded down her shoulders and her piercing blue eyes and all of that and I'm like you know I've looked at myself in the mirror a lot of times spent spent many years looking in the mirrors never have I looked at myself and been like Daniel with his roguish beard and <laughs> seafoam eyes it's like man I look tired this morning yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like <laughs> so, so, so it's like it's, so it's like anytime I hear a character describe themselves looking in the mirror I'm like motherfucker you're like god I wish I had another hour of sleep that's what yeah. you say when you look in the mirror yeah you're like oh fuck I forgot my eye cream last night now what shit I gotta start the six month process over like fuck <laughs> it's horrible yeah, exactly like I, you know I mean maybe I'm just not a positive positive enough person maybe I need some more like affirmation when I look in the mirror just like look at myself and be like Daniel you're a goddamn stallion look at you with those broad shoulders and those <laughs> steel I, I don't have steely eyes guys I'm sorry steely I eye. <laughs> speak it into existence Daniel it'll be fine I appreciate that I appreciate yeah. that so th- so this will be the homework for both of us is before our next podcast we're going to wake up in the morning we're going to look at ourselves and we're going to describe our own appearance <laughs> as if we were a novel <laughs> oh god <laughs> you know, 
I avoid looking in the mirror at all costs in the morning. <laughs> I can't change my routine. We're too far in. Yeah, no, you've already committed to it. Now I hear yeah. you. So, I mean, like, it's like, so going back to it before we get, get way too off of the rails, like, one of my favorite disguises, and it was a really interesting use of it, is, uh, you know, I don't know if you've read it. I'm, I'm a giant dork. I'm into, like, uh, Joe Abercrombie's first Law series. Nope. Really good grim dark you know fantasy stuff um mm-hmm. but he has one character logan nine fingers aka the bloody nine yeah look at that, that is sad. and he's kind of yeah. like the berserker badass of this story but mm-hmm. he spent one book called red country where like he had a character and his name was lamb and you kind of started getting over the course of it that this was logan but you know he was really trying hard not to uh be the badass legendary berserker he was and the disguise of this guy who just basically gets you know shit on the entire book and you're like and you're just going crazy in your mind going you don't even know like like it's not like he had amnesia he was just like dude i'm done with being this crazy psychotic guy you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and he even took on a name that was i'm gonna be a passive you know dude and like he helped this like family out for years and you know there's just like a good old boring reliable lamb and it's just like the entire time you're going through it, you're going through it and his disguise was as much like emotional and how he acted as it was physical but it was this perfect disguise and just he frustrates you the entire book because he's just like being a giant pussy i'm sorry i know it's not the best word and you know we can edit it out but a uh, uh, pansy pansy there we go we'll pansy, pansy. That's, yeah there you go I, good. I, I am trying to grow and learn and be better in my word choices. No, we don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. No. And so finally at the end of the book, when he gets there and he's just like, all right, well, I don't got a damn choice. Cause it's a little bit of like, they said it like almost like it's a Western and he gets back in and he's Logan nine fingers again at the end of this. And he's just clearing house and you're just sitting there and you're cheering. And you're like, yes. And uh, like yeah, that. Man just like that i mean it's it's the the reveal of a disguise all right then (laughs) but so all right so you were also telling me about superman and why you'll actually make a case that superman's glasses was a good disguise yes all right so a lot of people like they call bullshit on the superman disguise but it pretty much well okay not really but i mean i like to say that it worked because i so, all right, let's set the scene. All right, no, 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 we're going to back up. Ba-da-da-da-da. We're going back in time. <laughs> we got our chimes again. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking backwards, time machine. <laughs> all oh, right, man. so my friend had a shitty boyfriend. We were talking the shittiest of the shitty, and, like, I don't want to hash any of it out if she watches this. I don't, yeah, so. So we can call him that. the yellow boyfriend. Yes, we will call him Mr. Yellow. Beautiful. Shit. All right. So they finally broke up. We had been convincing her to break up for, yeah, a round of applause. They broke up. And we had been convincing her to do this for months. Oh my God, it felt like fucking years. Anyway, they finally break up and she has not, she's been like away for, I don't remember, like a week or two. It doesn't matter. So she, um, has to get her stuff from him and like I'm already very much like don't go back to him like I'm hyper fixated on keeping her away at this point like she got away we're gonna keep her away I don't care if we have to put her in a fucking headlock this is what we're gonna do like I went hardcore extreme because I hated the whole situation like oh I couldn't stand it so yeah she has to get her stuff and originally he was like come over and like I'll help you collect everything and I was like no no don't do it no I'll go over there. It's a trap. Was, <laughs> it's a trap. She, I was like, no, let me go over there. And she was like, oh, no, because you'll definitely kill him and nobody will ever hear from him again. And I was like, all right, that's, fair. that's a good point. It's a good point. She was right. Like, he, he'd disappear from his own house. Nobody would know. So he decides, or she decides that they're going to meet at Target. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, public space. Yeah, 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 that's good. So meanwhile, me and her sister are, like, plotting because we want to be there, but she doesn't want us to be there because she's convinced that I'm going to do something unpredictable, which, I mean, uh, she's not wrong. I always thought you were low-key, just very, you know, reliable. (laughs) Yeah, I'm totally, like, steady and stable. It's fine. (laughs) So 
I told her sister, I was like, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to meet at the Dunkin' Donuts uh, like half an hour before we have, she's going to be at Target and then we can drive over to the Target together. So in my head, I didn't tell her sister this plan, but I was going to dress up and I was going to go into that Target store instead of waiting in the parking lot and my bitch ass was going to follow them. But I was like, mm, if she sees me, she'll immediately like freak out and then they'll leave together because that's just her. And I was like, no, we can't scare her away. It's like a wild dog. Can't do that. Got to latch on. So, so sorry, my, my, my only question is, because I've always wondered, like, whenever there's, like, heist movies and stuff, they're always like, all right, synchronize our watches. Did you get, at least get to use that line? No, I went solo. I went rogue, oh, and I went solo. Went rogue. There yeah. we go. Yeah, I did. And I shouldn't have, but, like, mm, that's just me. So I get to the Dunkin' Donuts, and my bitch ass is in glasses and a red-haired wig, and I'm in a hoodie, and I'm, like, ready to go. I see her sister sitting in the booth with another mutual friend of ours. And they're like doing homework, just waiting on me to arrive. I text them that I'm there. And then like, I slide into the booth next to them. And I'm sitting was there. Was this like, like the casual like slide? Yeah, in, it was like, like, the... a, like a full slide. Like this. Okay. Like the switch. Yeah. yeah. So, and I didn't say anything because I just had my phone and I was waiting for them to notice me because I didn't tell anybody that I was going to do this. Because again, I went rogue. That's just me. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I haven't said anything and like I can I'm sitting next to her sister's friend and I see her just like constantly watching me out of the side of her eye like like kind of freaked out a little bit that somebody just joined them in their booth but neither of them are saying anything which is so fucking weird like why is a stranger sitting with you and you don't say something what are you so they're doing? not the confrontational types they're not just letting all. this happen not at all they let it happen and <laughs> I'm just sitting there and then I see her sister look up at me and then like a couple times and finally I'm just like so fed up because like I'm ready to go we're already late and I'm like let's what, what, what are you doing so I, I look up and I'm like hello can we leave yet and that was the first thing that I said she actually looks me in the eye and she goes do you know what the fuck in the middle <gasps> of a Dunkin Donuts She's like, what? Oh, my God. And, like, they start freaking out because they had no idea that it was me. So after the initial freak out, we drive over to Target, and they send me inside because, you know, what else am I wearing a wig for? Just to be a fucking weirdo? That'd be stupid. Well, what kind of wig are we talking about? Oh, what do you mean? Like, what's it look like? Like, because, all right, so for the folks at home that don't know, Dina's got, like, super curly hair and apparently spends, like, hours making this the most, uh, luxuriant brown hair you've ever seen the mane of <laughs> gold that's the mane. except it's brown it's fine so so it's a very distinct feature of dina yes. Yes. so that's why i need to know exactly what does this wig look like like how different are we talking we're talking like red red hair not like fire engine red but like as red <laughs> as you can get naturally like okay. and then it's like it had bangs oh my god oh. It, ha- it had bangs but it was like bad bangs <laughs> It was oh, bad, bad things. Okay. Bad things. Like bowl cut? Yeah, like that bowl yeah. cut that everyone had yeah, at like, some point. Yeah. This was my mother's wig from like the 80s. <laughs> Questions about why your mother had a wig in the 80s, but continue. <laughs> That's another story, Daniel. So, <laughs> so I took that and it had bangs and then it was like way shorter because at the time I had hair down to my ass. And yeah, I had to like literally knot this shit on top of my head and like <laughs> pull this wig down with all the force I could to mash down my hair so that it would stay still. Yeah. So, so I'm assuming this was straight red hair. Like, like what? it was like this a little was like a complete transformation. It was no, it was like a little bit wavy, but it wasn't curly. So it was just like, I'll have to, we can post a picture right. for the okay. time right. at some point. I'll find that picture. Perfect. So, and then I have my Perfect. glasses. Yeah. So that just, the whole thing was just a fucking nightmare looking in the mirror. Remember what we were talking about with the mirror? That's, I never want to wake up and feel that way. (laughs) Don't put that wig when you wake up in the morning. (laughs) No. So I walk into the Target and I instantly spot them at the Starbucks. So I'm like going in, but then they're sitting there and I'm sitting at like another booth, just like trying to listen in. And it's like super obvious. Like somebody (laughs) should fucking notice me, but nobody notices me, which is absolutely insane. Why are you people not paying attention? 
like hello have you heard of bombers <laughs> like I could have I could have had a bomb and nobody would have noticed I'm sitting there like listening in uh, like halfway out of my seat looking for at the table like trying to figure out what they're saying and I can't fucking hear them I scoot closer at one point and still nobody says anything like what the hell are you guys doing and so for the folks uh, keeping score on so the folks keeping score at home so far uh I have become a creepy massage predator and Dina is a terrorist now so that that's what we've established in this first episode but please continue (laughs) (laughs) very accurate very accurate um they decide to get up and walk around for whatever reason, which pissed me off because I didn't want to walk around. I was not in comfortable shoes. So (laughs) we're wandering and like doing laps around the entire store. And like, meanwhile, I'm trying to like get video recordings of them just so that I have evidence. Uh, Evidence of what? I don't know. There's there's evidence. evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm like, what? Makes complete sense. I'm in. (laughs) I'm wandering the aisles following them and at one point my friend uh what should we call her we'll call her Christine Christine looks at me kind of funny they're on like a greeting card aisle for whatever fucking reason it was really weird and she looks at me she just kind of stares for a second and I like walk around the other aisle I'm like oh fuck don't notice me oh shit we made eye contact (laughs) So then, like, uh, and they stay on this aisle, and, like, I'm trying to, like, move shelves so that I can see through the little holes. Still, no workers have approached me, and they should have. Got to amp up your security target. Come on. (laughs) And I'm, like, passing their aisle. At one point, I look at cards with them. Like, nobody. All right, so so, uh, so quick question. So quick question. Uh, Did you ever have spy music going on in your head as you're doing this? Like, where you're just like, yeah, for sure. For sure, 100%. Especially as I move the stuff, I was like, da 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 Like, I picture you, like, somersaulting through the aisles. <laughs> yes. like. I hid inside of, like, clothes racks and stuff like that, which you did as a kid. Like, did you really? To- yes. I literally you were got hiding inside, inside of the- clothes yes. racks? Oh, my God. Yes, I was moving stuff, and that's when she finally noticed me was when I was inside, like, I think it was a t-shirt or pants or something, and I moved the stuff, and she saw me again, and, like, at this point, her boyfriend had, like, walked away, or her ex-boyfriend, sorry, uh, Satan, yellow, Satan had, yellow. he had gone to the bathroom or whatever, so she was looking at clothes, and she sees me, and she's like, can I, can I help you, and I was like, <laughs> it's me, so this is why I say that Superman's disguise works, because when I said it's me, she still didn't notice, I take off the glasses, and she goes, oh, my God, Dina. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Superman's disguise is flawless. Because the glasses is, is what did her in. That is beautiful. It was the glasses, not the red hair. It no. was the, the <laughs> not the fact that you're hiding inside clothing racks. <laughs> it was the damn glasses. <laughs> the glasses is how she found me. Listen, oh, folks, at, folks at home, I want you to find a friend that will hide in clothing racks for you as a full-ass grown adult. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is, that is beautiful. I, yeah. I, I can't even... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And these, and, and, and listen, podcast folks at home, when we picked this, uh, this uh, topic, and, and for the record, I don't know any of these stories. She just made like a, a a notes list that just has like fifty stories that just have like ridiculous headlines, like <laughs> the time my brother took a picture with a prostitute, and you're just like, <laughs> "Hey, I'm in." And so when we picked the story, she was like, "Okay, well, I'll just pick one that's not like super popular. We'll save that for like when we do this podcast for real." So if this is our our jumping on point, if this is one of her less. <laughs> Same stories. I can't fucking wait, Dina. Oh God, it's such a nightmare, but it's like the funnest nightmare you could ever imagine. Like, so exciting. Oh my gosh, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. So, all right. Do you have any other final thoughts on disguises or literary before we get into our dramatic reading? Glasses always work is always work yeah, now, I mean no, no hold on now I do have a technical question as you are a resident spy mm-hmm. do you pick like normal glasses where you're just like hey this is something a person would wear or do you just like go like over the top loud huge ones because then it's like they look at the giant crazy glasses and they're like 
I, I don't even care who's beneath it. That's just weird. No, you got to do like really, you got to do really low key glasses that you would really wear. Like, I mean, yeah, you got to do like classic. Well, for me, it would be classic nerdy little, what is that? Yep. Not, not horn rim, like the, the black frame square glass. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's kind of like square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to go with, you got to go low key because nobody expects the low key. They're going to expect no, yeah, you to go exactly. crazy. Yeah. Exactly, because I mean, then you have like idiots like me that's like, can I get brighter and louder? I'm a peacock captain. You gotta let me fly. Oh, okay. All right. Well, from, from the other guys, from the other guys. It's a good movie. No, Listen, I've never seen it. Lost in Tasia. Uh, never seen the other guys. No, I haven't. With Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. Oh my God! You're. I have. Yep. Oh my God. Totally. Oh my God! I was about to say. Dude, no, I'm so bad at remembering <sighs> things. I sent out a tweet. The other day and I was like I can rewatch things so many times because I don't remember what happens. I don't. I I rewound an episode while watching it and was surprised. Like I mm, nothing <laughs> sticks. Nothing sticks. That's our resident genius right there. Yeah, this is why this, I told you guys I was gonna prove everybody wrong. Not a genius. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so then I guess it is time. For our big read of the day. Oh, All right. Hold on. It's, oh, God. It's, it's, let's, let's do this. Technical difficulties. Now, should I do this in like, should I do this in like the voice? Like, try to go nice and low. Get yeah. really into it. You should or, get into it. All right. Perfect. All right. That's what she said. So, for the record, this list was not created by us. We had nothing to do with it. I am just reading off of a website. So, if you have a problem with the book or the line, Please understand that um, we are just your humble messengers, and I'm sure it's a really good book and that this is just an awkward non. All right, you ready? ready. From The Office in the Gardens, for, sorry, The Office and Gardens of the Ponds by Didier Decoin. Katsuro moaned as the bulge formed beneath the material of his kimono, a bulge that Miyuki seized, kneaded, massaged, squashed, and crushed with the what? fondle. Katsuro's penis and testicles became one single mound that rolled around beneath her grip of her hand. Miyuki felt as though she was manipulating a small monkey that was curling up its paws. <laughs> I hurt just reading. <laughs> first of all, what first got me was kimono. I wasn't expecting it. Yep. Second, she crushed what? What did she crush? Yes. All of it, all of it. It's Whoa. one mound now. Ah, one no. mound. <laughs> no. Ah, why is it a monkey? Why? I have so many questions. Oh, what like... is this book about? <laughs> I, oh, I assume... no. But like, like, how did this go to like an editor and through some beta readers and everyone's like, yeah, no, this is totally, totally what people do with sex. This is how the sexing works. Am I doing something wrong? Am I supposed to be Listen, go home to your husband tonight and be like, hey, hey, sweetheart, I've got a new technique I need to try out. Oh, no. Oh, God. And then next week's Pods episode, we will be discussing Dina's eventual divorce. <laughs> it started the other night when he walked by me and didn't give me a glass of wine. So, yeah, and now we're here. Yeah. Now it I turned mean, into crushing. Kind of now it turned into crushing and kneading. So it was one oh mouth. yeah, you got it yep, you got a like dough. Yeah, like dough exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, get get really. Ugh. Ugh. No. God. <laughs> it's terrible in every sense of the word. Oh no. Oh gosh! All right, all right. Now that I'm thoroughly disgusted with myself and um, with all literary things, um, see, you know what? This is why I like books like this. You know, I'm not a romance genre writer because mm -hmm. like sometimes you read a book and you're like. Man, this, this is so good. I can't possibly write at this level. All my work's shit. Yeah. And then sometimes you read a passage from an author and you're like, yeah, I can get published. I, yeah. I can do better than that. <laughs> this is I feel like time? we fell on that level of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. I can't even like, like write you know <laughs> those type of scenes. Like, but at the same time, I could definitely not have a monkey and crushing and kneading in my scene so yeah it, exactly yeah you that's could, the you bar could definitely take it 
Yeah. <laughs> that is the bar. All right. So, Dina, before we roll out of here, next episode, when we have Dina's story time, we're gonna this, the, we're continuing this theme of a choose your own adventure novel. She's gonna give you three headlines from her life stories, and you, fair audience, get to we'll have a poll up when you follow us, and you'll get to say, please, Dina, your enigmatic e- eminence. Ooh, dumb, dumb ooh, piece. ooh, tell us this story, and if uh, and then we'll go from there. So give us three headlines. All right, so since it was mentioned in the um, throughout our, our time together today, we can talk about my brother's hooker pictures. <laughs> not or, even prostitutes. This is a straight hooker. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a straight hooker. It's not a prostitute. <laughs> or we can talk about my fake boyfriend in high school. Ooh. 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 Or we can talk about my kayak trip from school where I almost died. Oh, so we get prostitutes, fake boyfriends, or Dina almost dying. Ooh, this yep. is, Take this your is pick, excellent. People. Take your pick. <laughs> Take your pick. So, you have now been witness to the first glorious episode of Don't Make It Weird with Dina and Daniel. Dina, tell the folks at home where they can find you on social media. You can find me on Twitter at D. That's all I got. Dinos- I don't have any other social media. It's fine. Yeah, there you go. At <laughs> Dinosaurus D. We're not even going to spell this for you because fuck you. That's Yeah, why. figure it out. And if figure you- it out. Be smart. <laughs> Be smart. <laughs> Love it. And you can find me at Dan Q. Writes Thing. Because there was not enough letter for me to have an extra S on the end. Oh. So Dan Q. Writes Thing. One thing. Just one thing. All right, this is (laughs) just one thing, and I can't promise you'll be good. Uh, (laughs) We will eventually have a a a Twitter account for this podcast as well. So I want to thank you guys all for listening. Like, subscribe. You can find us absolutely nowhere because this is a demo episode. We love you all. Good night. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. I think that's the perfect way to end all.